Are we alone in the universe? Individuality, ingenuity, and uniqueness are those qualities which describe the distinguishing characteristics of our species. Complex cells, organs, and organ systems that interact with each other by the way of more than 100 billion neurons in our body. Man, unlike animals, can think logically, feel, and even plan. But then, how are we unique and one of a kind? The truth is that long before the appearance of our planet, thousands and even millions of similar star systems already existed. And to the present day, these worlds are located not only in nearby galaxies, but in the Milky Way galaxy itself. In fact, the cosmos is so immense that life could have originated in millions of other cases besides on our blue planet. Let's try to understand one of the most extraordinary and fascinating mysteries of modern cosmology, and we will try to learn the answer to the question, are we alone in the universe? Perhaps we will begin our story with the Fermi paradox, which is the absence of visible traces of the activity of alien civilizations, which would have had to already settle throughout the universe over the billions of years of its development. Just imagine that any of us right now can look up in the night sky and see thousands of small stars in it. There are up to 400 billion of them in the Milky Way alone, and a fair amount of them have their own planetary system. In practically each of these systems, there is a so-called habitable zone, in which the odds are there is a planet similar to our Earth, and consequently, an intelligent civilization. How is it that with such a high percent of probability of extraterrestrial life, we still haven't noticed a single sign? Nevertheless, the diversity and infinite number of stars with their own systems gives us hope that something does indeed exist out there. Therefore, let's get back to the search. In 1961, radio astronomer Francis Drake undertook the task of estimating the likely number of extraterrestrial civilizations that are ready to make contact with us. He proposed a simple mathematical formula which calculated the percentage of the probability of the existence of intelligent life in the universe. The formula is seen like this. The provocative power of Drake's formula lay in its obviousness. There is simply nothing to disagree with at first glance. Despite the fact that the controversy surrounding the Drake's formula hasn't ceased for more than 60 years, a final solution has not yet been found. Given the absence of any signals whatsoever from nearby star systems, it's safe to assume that any civilization which becomes technologically advanced is at great risk of inevitable self-destruction. For example, because of nuclear war, ecological disaster, or war with elves. Thus, such a civilization has very little time to be noticed. However, if that doesn't happen, any civilization sooner or later must attain a level 1,000 times greater than ours, and then they will see us as similar. But further, it is even more interesting. In 1964, a method of determining the technological development of civilizations was proposed by the Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, resulting in it being called the Kardashev scale. Using this method, the scientist hypothesized what these kinds of advanced races could be like, classifying them according to the amount of efficient energy of which they are able to make use. The scientists supposed that those civilizations which are able to use the energy available on their planet can be classified as Type 1. Type 2 civilizations can use all the energy emitted by their main star. And Type 3 is able to use the energy of the entire galaxy together with that of the Death Star. According to the judgment of astronomer Carl Sagan, we are about 70% of the way to Type 1 civilization and can hypothetically reach this level in two centuries. It is worth mentioning the zoo hypothesis, about which astrophysicist John Ball spoke. The zoo hypothesis 
proposes that aliens do in fact exist, and they even know where we are, but because of some intrinsic rules, or out of preference, they keep us in the dark. And finally, let's consider the theory of the dark forest. This theory has its origin in a popular science fiction book, written by Liu Sushin. His ideas can be easily applied to encounters between humanity and civilizations from other planets. In his work, Liu Sushin writes that all forms of life have one concern, the struggle for survival, and the real intentions of alien life forms remain unknown. It is impossible to establish in advance whether the aliens you come into contact with will be able to destroy you if they are given the opportunity. In his book, Sushin compares the universe to a dark forest. Civilizations are like forest huntsmen, gliding between the trees and looking like ghosts. They are afraid to make loud sounds, their movements are cautious, and their breathing is almost inaudible. This watchfulness is essential to their survival, as there are many other similar types of hunters in the forest, and if you encounter them, the safest choice is to open fire and eliminate the potential danger. When we look at it from this perspective, it seems reasonable to assume that others are deliberately hiding from us and do not respond to the signals we send. Anyway, take a look at this picture. It is an image of a small region of space compiled from data taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. The image covers a very small area and contains approximately 10,000 galaxies. Just think about these numbers. It seems that we simply do not have the right to call ourselves the only and unique ones in our universe purely because we can't possibly know. Indeed, so far, our radio signals are flying away without a trace into the distant depth of outer space. But who knows, perhaps we'll still be waiting for an answer until its time comes.